This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As Black History Month begins today, we look back at the assassination of Black Panther leader Fred Hampton in Chicago 51 years ago, and how new documents reveal more details about the FBI's role in the murder of the 21-year-old revolutionary. Fred Hampton was killed December 4, 1969, when Chicago police raided his apartment and shot and killed him in his own bed. Black Panther leader Mark Clark was also killed by police in that raid. Authorities initially claimed the Panthers had opened fire on the police, who were there to serve a search warrant for weapons. Evidence later emerged that told a very different story. The FBI, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office and Chicago police had conspired to assassinate Fred Hampton. Now, several hundred pages of FBI memos and reports obtained by historian and writer Aaron Leonard through a Freedom of Information Act request document that the director of the FBI's Domestic Intelligence Division, William Sullivan, and the head of the extremist section of the Domestic Intelligence Division, George Moore, both played key roles in planning the raid and the cover-up that followed. For more on what these documents say, we're joined by Flint Taylor and Jeff Haas, founding members of the People's Law Office in Chicago, who are the lead lawyers in the landmark Fred Hampton and Mark Clark civil rights case. Their new piece for Truth Out is headlined, New Documents Suggest J. Edgar Hoover Was Involved in Fred Hampton's Murder. Jeff Haas, let's begin with you. You wrote a book about Fred Hampton. Talk about what these new documents show and what you see as the smoking gun of J. Edgar Hoover's direct involvement. Thank you, Amy. Um, well, first of all, it's 51 years after the incident and 40-some years after the trial. We had never gotten these documents before. But what they showed was that Hoover and Sullivan and Moore were following Roy Mitchell, a special agent in charge, very closely uh, with regard to O'Neill. And they were complimenting him and rewarding him from the moment he gave the information and the floor plan uh, to special agent Mitchell. They were congratulating Mitchell on what a wonderful job he did with this informant. Of course, Mitchell got the floor plan, gave it to Hanrahan's police, and that's what led to the raid. The floor plan even showed the bed where Hampton and Johnson would be sleeping. So we knew much of this. We knew O'Neill had gotten a bonus. We never knew Mitchell got a bonus. And we never knew that Hoover and Sullivan and Moore were starting to watch this in November, but a week, um, 10 days before it happened. They were monitoring exactly what went on. And so it was approved at the highest level. And during the trial, we had sought to go up to Sullivan and Moore and Hoover, but the judge wouldn't allow us. And we thought perhaps even John Mitchell and Richard Nixon were involved. We didn't have these documents, so we couldn't uncover that. Uh, this also shows that after the raid, uh, the head of the FBI in Chicago met with and congratulated the informant O'Neill, thanked him for his information, which led to the success of the raid. Uh, what's also interesting is 51 years later, these documents still have redactions. Uh, there's a specific redaction because an FBI agent had been called in front of a grand jury, and he was told, if you get asked any questions about blank, which is the FBI, leave the grand jury and report to, so, to, report to your higher-ups. A year after the raid, the FBI role and COINTELPRO had never been disclosed. It was only about Hanrahan and the police. So it took us 13 years to uncover that it was COINTELPRO, a program whose objective was to disrupt, destroy, and neutralize the Panthers, and specifically prevent the rise of a black messiah like Fred Hampton, who could unify and electrify the masses. It was this FBI program that led to the passing of the floor plan and the 90 shots and Fred Hampton executed in his bed at 2.30 at in the morning on December 4th. Now, now, Jeff, you, uh, the documents also seem to indicate that there was a plan to cover up the FBI's involvement in the raid. Could you talk about that aspect of what you've uncovered? Yes. Uh, at the grand jury, this was a special state grand jury, because the black community was so outraged and there was a lot of pressure, they called a special grand jury. Well, they allowed the FBI agent who talked about who fired the guns, but they didn't allow anybody to talk about the floor plan or the role of the informant, William O'Neill, in setting up the raid and getting a bonus for it. So that was kept quiet. 
Matter of fact, if there hadn't been a raid at the Media Pennsylvania FBI office, we might never have learned about COINTELPRO. And, and in terms of why it's taken so long and there's still redactions on some of these documents, I mean, there's the, the, the assassination of President Kennedy, there have been documents released from that. And here, here we have a one radical uh, revolutionary in Chicago, and, uh, and it's taken so long just to get information about what actually happened. Well, yes, I think the cover-up continues, and the fact that many of these pages contain redaction, including the information from O'Neill. So the things the FBI has still not released, we think showing the involvement of higher-ups. We do have a continuous rewarding of the special agent Roy Mitchell, referring to the success of the raid, how the raid was critical to the role of the FBI. So see, some of these documents are new. But for the next year, Roy Mitchell got congratulated for how well he had handled O'Neill and how important the information had gotten. And they call, continuously internally call the rate of success, while externally they were hiding it. I want to bring Flint Taylor into this conversation, co-founder of the People's Law Office in Chicago. You and Jeff were arrested for protesting what you called uh, in the PC outrageous rulings of the judge and the blatant misconduct of the defense. Can you explain what this trial was, Flint? Well, this was a trial, eight, 18 months uh, on trial, Jeff and I and others in our office, uh, fighting to get these documents out, fighting to establish the role of the FBI. And we had a judge who was very similar to Judge um, Hoffman in the Conspiracy 8 trial, which many people may remember. Uh, and he was dead set against us. He was originally from Alabama. He was a racist. Uh, and he did not believe and would not let us get at the evidence uh, that the FBI was involved in this case. But we were developing this evidence along with the Senate select committee, the church committee. So we were exposing this evidence both in court and outside of court, and the judge was getting more and more upset with us. And so when we protested uh, the unfair rulings that he was making, he was keeping us from putting Hoover in the case. He was keeping us from putting uh, John Mitchell and uh, the others from Washington in the case. And he was um, uh, keeping us from getting the documents that showed the bonus to O'Neill, the informant. Uh, all of this we were fighting for day and day after day. And when we protested, both of us at various times were held in contempt and sent to the federal uh, lockup here in Chicago. But we kept fighting it. Uh, the judge threw the case out after 18 months of trial, believe it or not. He wouldn't let the jury decide the case. We fought to, uh, it to appeal, and we won uh, a remarkable decision in the Court of Appeals, uh, defended it in the U.S. Supreme Court, and 13 years of, of litigation and fighting uh, to get the evidence out, uh, we were ultimately able to, to uh, obtain one of the largest, if not the largest, police violence settlement for the families of Mark Clark and Fred Hampton and the surviving uh, Panthers uh, in the history at that time of, of, of the federal courts. And uh, Flint, for the, the younger members of, of our audience who really do not un perhaps uh, understand the role and significance of the Black Panther Party and for instance, J. Edgar Hoover labeling them the greatest domestic threat to the U.S. government. Hoover was aware by then, although the public found out later, that there had been polling done, secret polling done, that showed that more than 25 percent of all African Americans at the time supported the uh, Black Panther Party. Could you talk about the party's significance? party was very significant, and its leadership was as well. And Fred Hampton was a, not only an up-and-coming leader, but a, a very charismatic and dynamic leader. And the Panthers uh, had a 10-point program. That program uh, covered the waterfront 
uh, with, with all sorts of revolutionary and socialistic programs, uh, free breakfast program, for example, a free medical clinic, for another example, a newspaper that came out every week and talked about the atrocities of, of the police and, and, and the government. It was very much an anti-imperialist organization, uh, fought against the war in Vietnam, said people should not go to Vietnam, uh, opposed mass incarceration before there actually was that term, uh, and uh, also was very strong in setting up and fighting for coalitions between black, uh, Hispanic, or, or uh, like the Young Lords, of course, you know about that, Warren, Juan, and other organizations, uh, revolutionary and radical organizations. And this is another reason why Hoover feared uh, the Panthers so much, because they were bringing together all sorts of different radical and revolutionary groups, war, uh, groups against the war in Vietnam. Uh, and this was very threatening to the government at that time. And they targeted under the COINTELPRO program, which was focused to destroy the Black Panther Party uh, on Fred Hampton and the Black Panthers because they were so successful here in Chicago. We want to thank you, Flint Taylor and Jeff Haas, co-founding members of the People's Law Office in Chicago, lead lawyers in the landmark Fred Hampton, Mark Clark civil rights case. Their new piece, will link to a truth out, is headlined, New Documents Suggest J. Edgar Hoover Was Involved in Fred Hampton's Murder.